Now, I remember uh, this uh, drug, this uh, Basile Camlet Gerin, BCG, as something that I took as a child to uh, immunize me against TB. What's that got to do with COVID-19? <laughs> Um, yes, um, Peter, hello, good evening. Um, that's nice that you remember that. I hope you didn't uh, you didn't swallow it, but <laughs> you should have been injected it into the skin. It is a, a vaccine that we know prevents serious cases of tuberculosis in children, but it's a very old vaccine and one has over time observed that it has many other beneficial effects among them. Uh, protection against respiratory infections that we don't really quite understand where it comes from. And we have now started this, uh, this trial with 250 healthcare workers that will get the real vaccination and 250 healthcare workers that will get uh, placebo in order to find proof that it actually works, um, which is, as we know, required to recommend it. So what pointed you in this direction? Uh, you said that uh, it has had uh, uh, positive effects uh, in, in other respiratory conditions, but uh, why is it just a question of trying everything that we can? I think there is a reasonable case uh, to use BCG to try this. Uh, in, in as researchers, we always look at the risk-benefit ratio and the risk of using a baby vaccine in adults that have already had it before once in their lives is very small and the potential benefits are actually quite large. And where this came from is uh, some early observations that were made that countries that have a practice of vaccinating their babies seem to do better in this epidemic. But this is obviously something that needs to be confirmed with the, with the proper evidence that we are trying to create uh, so that we don't take away these vaccines from the babies that really need them in order to uh, vaccinate people in whom it might not actually work. All right, so how are you going to test its efficacy? Are all the test subjects at this stage um, COVID-19 negative? And then is the test going to be, how are you going to determine whether there is an effect or not? Yes, we, we are going to vaccinate these to in total 500 people without us or the people knowing what they're actually getting. And then we will follow them up two weekly, perhaps monthly with telephone calls and we'll try to find out if they have been affected by this epidemic and how severely. And we will report this data to an independent committee of experts and they actually do know who got what type of vaccination and they will be able to basically real time uh, observe if there is a protection from this vaccination. And if there is, then they will inform us so that we can stop the study, make the result public, and hopefully they vaccinate everyone that's at risk. All right, so we're not looking at a cure here, but uh, what are we trying to do to um, shorten the period of illness, uh, reduce the severity of the symptoms? What, what are we hoping this might uh, give us? You, you are precisely right with this. We hope that we can achieve a shorter disease and uh, hopefully less severe symptoms, which will, especially in healthcare workers, help us to have more of them at work to look after the very sick patients that might be coming in. And in the extreme case, we might actually prevent uh, people from dying and they might just then have uh, 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 an illness that gets away with a bit of oxygen and a hospital stay. All right, so is, are similar studies being done in other parts of the world or are you alone at the moment? Um, we, we are not quite alone. There are similar studies done that I know of in the Netherlands and in Australia, but both these countries do not have a vaccination policy uh, in babies. So they will use this vaccine for the very first time in their adults. And we are the only country in the world that will test what we call the revaccination. So we will give the vaccination again to people that have had it as babies. So our, our study adds a unique angle to the project. All right. So when do you think you'll start to be able to uh, say that you, you're getting your first set of indicators? 
Um, personally, I well, first I have to say that this will depend on the speed of the epidemic. Right. So we've just heard that an increase of cases is inevitable. This is uh, basically good for our result because the the quicker the epidemic goes, the quicker we will be able to see if our protection actually happens. Uh, personally, I hope that we will have a result in six months. And uh, if it takes longer to show protection, then I think the protection probably isn't worth uh, uh, waiting for. Mm. So our study duration is one one year. And I hope that after six months, we'll have enough data to stop. All right. Is this a new BCG uh, uh, vaccine or are we using the old one uh, on a new disease? We are using the very same old one that you have probably had as a baby. And that's also why I think it's very safe to do. All right. And I suppose that uh, it helps in terms of jump some of these hurdles uh, to get straight to testing on uh, patients. We have uh, had beautiful uh, collaboration with our ethics boards and the regulatory authority of South Africa that have allowed this protocol to go through and, and being reviewed and, and very constructively criticized within about three weeks, which is uh, very, very, very fast. So we, we can say that we have, you know, really very good support of the authorities to get this study uh, on its way. All right. 500 participants, is that enough? I, I, it sounds as if it's a small sample. Could it be bigger? It probably should be bigger. Um, the background of this is that uh, it's my little research organization that is currently funding this study uh, just with our you know, man hours that under lockdown conditions, we can't really use another research project. And the vaccines are relatively um, low cost, so we can afford to, to start this study uh, on our own. But we do hope that at some point some funding will come across to help us increase the sample size to hopefully something between two and 3,000 participants. And the Department of Health watching this uh, uh, eagerly, I'm sure. Hi, Peter. I think the <laughs> Department of Health, they have got enough uh, other uh, worries <laughs> than our little trial here. But if they could find some, some uh, time to support it, that'd be great. All right. What kind of support do you give each other in this kind of uh, sort of research uh, a community? I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm sort of imagining you on Skype with another uh, professor in another part of the world and uh, exchanging notes and sharing ideas. That is uh, happening a lot. Uh, we, we have, uh, uh, we are collaborating, I can say, with the, the Dutch group. We have adjusted the protocols in such a manner that the results will hopefully be comparable, even though the communities we do it in are very different. We've made sure that the protocols are aligned enough so we can pool the data and hopefully get some conclusions out of that data set that will tell us if the South African way of having vaccinated babies or the Dutch way of not having vaccinated the babies makes a difference uh, in, in this outcome. All right, Professor, we wish you the best of luck and uh, a nation, uh, uh, possibly a world, uh, waiting to see uh, the efficacy of uh, what uh, this BCG vaccine might do and uh, would be a great help if things work out. Thanks so much indeed and uh, good luck with your work.